Now, once the skin is reflected, the fascia here is a tough fascia and it is attached to the subcutaneous parts of the leg bones and it also sends intramuscular septae. You have two intramuscular septae, one anterior intramuscular septum, another is a posterior intramuscular septum. Both septae are attached to the fibula by these two septae, the whole sleeve, the whole leg is divided into three compartments. You have an anterior compartment or extensor compartment, a lateral compartment, a small lateral compartment or peroneal compartment and a posterior compartment or the flexor compartment. And each compartment has got a nerve and artery. The nerve of the anterior compartment is the deep peroneal nerve and the lateral compartment is a superficial peroneal nerve and the posterior compartment is a tibial nerve. These nerves supply the muscles in their respective compartments. Now we are going to remove the deep fascia to expose the muscles of the anterior and lateral compartments. I will make a vertical insertion through the deep fascia along the anterior border of the tibia and then the fascia can be exposed. Now we will remove this fascia completely and then study the muscles of the various compartments. The muscles are exposed after removal of the fascia of leg. Now we come to the lateral compartment of leg. The lateral compartment is between the anterior intramuscular septum. You can see the septum, the cut margin of the septum over here, okay? And here is the posterior intramuscular septum, the cut margin of the posterior intramuscular septum. And the muscles in the lateral compartment, there are two muscles, the peroneus longus, which is superficially placed, and peroneus brevis, which is deeply placed. These two muscles take origin from the lateral surface of the fibula. This is the lateral surface of the fibula. In the, from the upper part of the lateral surface, the peroneus longus takes origin. From the lower part, it's actually upper two-thirds two and lower two-thirds. The intermediate part, they overlap with one another. And this is the lateral surface. And it are not only from the lateral surface, but also from the anterior and posterior intramuscular septum and the deep fascia of the leg. The tendons of the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis pass behind the lateral malleolus deep to the superior peroneal retinaculum, superior peroneal retinaculum. So the lower end of here is the lower end of the fibula, which is called the lateral malleolus. The tendons related to it is the peroneus longus and brevis. And if you trace these tendons distally, you will see they will be passing through another retinaculum, which is the inferior peroneal retinaculum. So you have a superior peroneal retinaculum, which extends, we'll see the attachment later. This is the inferior peroneal retinaculum. And it has got two compartments. The upper compartment transmits the, this tendon, which is the peroneus brevis, and the lower one transmits the peroneus longus. And let us trace the peroneus longus tendon, and you can see the tendon after passing through the inferior peroneal retinaculum, it grooves the lateral aspect of the cuboid bone and then turns medially and runs across the it in fact grooves the under surface of the cuboid and runs across the sole of the foot. 
This is the tunnel. And comes to the medial aspect and gets attached to the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal bone on the plantar aspect. In the bone, you can see the tendon goes like that, and this is the cuboid bone. It turns around the lateral margin of the cuboid and grooves the undersurface of the cuboid and comes and gets attached to the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal bone. So, since this tendon comes to the lateral aspect, okay, it will be lifting the lateral border, which is an eversion. Okay? Both peroneus longus and brevis are the chief everters of the foot. The eversion and inversion, if you see, it takes place at the subtalar joint and mid-tarsal joint, not at the ankle joint. In the ankle joint, you have only dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, whereas the inversion and eversion taking place at the subtalar joint and the mid-tarsal joint. So here is a peroneus. Peroneus brevis is the other deeper muscles of the lateral compartment. You can see the tendon here, okay? And then it comes and gets attached to the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal or tubercle of the fifth metatarsal bone here, okay? So we have seen already peroneus tertius is inserted into the dorsal aspect of the fifth metatarsal bone and peroneus brevis to the tubercle of the fifth metatarsal bone and the peroneus longus is crossing the foot in the fourth layer and gets attached to the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal bones. So all these three bones, three muscles are everters of the foot. So eversion and inversion is the common university question which is often asked. So please remember to write about these three muscles, peroneus longus, peroneus previs, peroneus tertius, and this action takes place at the subtalar and mid-tarsal joint. And these muscles are supplied by the superficial peroneal nerve. The, we have seen the termination of the common peroneal nerve, just lateral to the bone, the neck of the, this is the neck of the fibula, where it divides into its terminal branches. This is the deep peroneal nerve. Here is a superficial peroneal nerve, deep to the peroneus longus. So it is between the neck of the fibula and peroneus longus. If you trace this nerve, it supplies the muscles of the lateral compartment of leg, namely peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. After supplying these two muscles, it becomes cutaneous by piercing the deep fascia at the junction of the upper two-thirds with the lower one-third of the leg and divides into two branches. So this nerve is regarded as the musculocutaneous nerve of leg and it divides into medial and a lateral branch. The medial branch we have already seen and it divides into digital nerves to supply the medial side of the big toe and the interdigital cleft between the second and the, of course major part of the dorsum plus the skin over the toes and except the interdigital cleft that also the lateral one supplies the lateral toes and we have already seen the sural nerve supplying the lateral margin and the saphenous nerve supplying the proximal part, part of the medial margin up to the ball of the big toe. So that's about the lateral compartments.